Okay, I'm starting here in Mastercam. First thing I always do is I go to my machine type. I select a router. The specific router I have is a Techno Servo. That brings up my property manager, and I'm going to set up my stock. Under stock setup, um, I'm going to run this one a little differently than the others. I'm going to keep my bit in the center of my board, and that will guarantee it's going to be centered. The, we're going to run this in the pine. It's 11 by 11, and it's 3 quarters of an inch thick. If I want to see my stock on my screen, I hit display here, and then OK it. Okay. And then on here, F9 is my Cartesian coordinate plane. Now that I've picked my tool, set up the piece of wood that I'm going to be working in, my next step is create my geometry. So I'm going to go create a rectangle. I'm going to just do it this way. I'm going to snap at the origin and bring it up and over 11 and 11. There's a lot of ways to do this, um, but you can see it's not sitting on top of my stock. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move it so that it's centered. And I, I could have created my rectangle that way in the first place, um, but I want to show you this. So if I want to move this to origin, I'm going to create a line. I'm just going to create it from midpoint to midpoint. And then I can move it by going X form, move to origin, and I'm going to snap that center mark, my midpoint of my line. And now that the part's on top of my stock. Are we good there? I'm going to go X form offset. The little marble holes are offset one inch on center. So I'm going to click once, twice, three times, I think. Yep, and I'm going to do the same thing on the way down. One, two, three. Okay. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a vertical line. So create a line from an endpoint. I'm going to snap on this midpoint and bring it over here. I've done that operation. Back to X form offset. I'm going to offset these lines one inch. One, two, one, two, and one more time. So I'm going to do it three times on each side. Okay. And actually, I'm going to, yeah, I'll just do that. Okay, so now I have this grid. It is a little hard to see. The top, I only have three marble holes right here. So just to make it a little easier to see, I'm going to trim this line back to here, this line back to here. And I think I only do that for the top two rows and the bottom two rows. Okay, and then on the sides I go out two as well, so I'm going to trim that to there. You don't have to do this, I'm just doing it to make it a little easier to see. So there's my grid, green check mark, I'm finished. And now I'm actually going to toolpath these holes, and I'm going to do it differently than other toolpaths I've done. What I'm going to do is I'm going to toolpath it as a drill. So I'm going to drill, um, and I could, I don't know, I could call these holes or something. The marbles go. And then on this, I'm gonna, this is a select, a point. So I'm going to keep this thing blue. And then I'm going to cl just click my points of intersection. I could probably do it with just a window and select all of them. The order I select them at is going to be the order they run, and I really want to always go towards efficiencies. So, you know, I want it to be a pretty efficient pattern. 
Okay, there's my green check mark. And now I'm going to set up my parameters here. It's a drill. We're going to use a half inch uh, ball end mill. So I'm going to select that here. Um, yeah, there's a half inch center mill. That's a good feed rate. I could actually go faster than that. And remember, yeah, that feed rate's good. I'm going to work my way down through here. Linking parameters, remember because I called my top of stock zero, I'm going to call all of these absolute. And then the depth of those holes could be about, um, it's a negative value, negative 0.2. So now those are all getting just slightly drilled with the ball and mill. Okay. Let me see if I did that correctly. I could do that with verify. Um, in, in my verify window, I'm going to look at it as an isometric. And there's, that looks like the right pattern. Okay. Then I have one more operation to do, and that's just drawing the circle around the whole thing. These things are kind of in my way right now. This allows me to see the operations or not. So if I click that, I can go back to my geometry. And I think what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to offset um, – one of these lines, maybe an inch and a half. I'm just going to take this line, offset it an inch and a half, and that's going to give me the diameter of my circle. So now I'm going to create an arc from a center point. I'm going to click right in the middle there, and it'll snap right there. I'm done that piece of geometry. I'm going to tool path this circle, so a tool path as a contour. The contour, the way I'm going to select it is a chain. Uh, it goes all the way around, it turns yellow. I'm going to use that same half inch center drill. Uh, 200, 100 would actually work because I'm not going that deep. I'm only going, you know, point two. Uh, but just to be safe, I think I'll set it more like at 150. I'll work my way down here. Under cut parameters, I'm going to have that drill bit run down the center line of my line. Depth of cut, I always select this. This is how much it could go down in one pass. And even though I'm not going to use it here, I'm still going to um, set it just as an emergency. The rule here is less than the diameter, so I could go up to like 0.5 almost. Lead in, lead out. This is a horizontal lead in. I'm going to deselect that. Breakthroughs, multi passes, tabs, we're not going to use any of those. Then under linking parameters, again, these are all absolute. It's a negative value, again, so negative 0.2. I could go a little deeper on this one, maybe negative 0.25. There's my second tool path. So my first tool path is drilling. My second tool path is a contour on the center line to cut it out. This will select both of them. I'll verify them both. The isometric view. That looks good. And then... I'm going to make sure I save this. I want to go, I want to make sure I save it. And then after I'm done saving it, then I'm going to post it. And that post is going to turn all these vectors into numeric code. So I'm going to post it uh, onto the desktop. I like calling this, um, I call it marble, solitaire. And then I'm going to get, my name convention is 1111. And that gives me the size of my board. And this is going to post it as an NC file. And this is kind of the power of these softwares is it's able to take all this information and convert it into G code or numeric code. So this is the window of numeric code. Um, and you can see there's only, because there are drilling operations, there's only about 50 lines of code. I'm going to take that code out to the shop and run it.